Hello and welcome back to the next episode in our Crusader Kings 3 campaign playing as Vali Baduspan Gerdzadzadeh of Dihistan. We're currently at war with the Zaded Emirate over here and uh, we're about to get attacked in the mountains and I need to make a decision as to whether we're going to command the army because we'll get uh, 36 advantage or if we should have Tamasp Gavbare uh, command it in our stead. Um, and uh, I think I think we're going to command it. It's risky because if we get killed or captured, uh, that could really <laughs> negatively affect the war. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the chances are even. Let's just see how we go. Um, we'll slow time down there. So they'll arrive. When will they arrive? They will arrive. Does it not say? Doesn't say. Well, they're going to arrive soon. In eight days, okay. Well, they are defending in the mountains, so... Hopefully, uh... Yeah, hopefully it works out for us. Let's see. How many days now? One day. Alright, so, here's the battle. And we start out with 40 advantage in our favour. We've got Zupin Spearmen, they've got Pikemen. Are there any other troops I can raise? No, no other troops I can raise. That's all we've got. Um, hmm. Half the total of all soldiers at the start of the battle. Oh, I see, okay. Oh, they've got a pretty decent commander too, 29. Because he's leading his own troops. So it's not as much of an advantage as I'd hoped. An unexpected visit with my mind set on, re uh, on a relaxing evening. I am heading for my courtier Hafsa's chambers with some tea and a chess set. Without knocking, I push her door open. Valia Hafsa is seated by her desk, writing furiously. As I clear my throat, she jumps out of her skin. She quickly stuffs a roll of parchment into her pocket and turns towards me with an uneasy look upon her face. Um... Hmm, okay, let's maybe return later and see what she's doing. I rummage through Valia Hafsa's desk, feeling my pulse quickening. Where is that damned piece of parchment? Uh, Baduspan? What are you doing here? I turn around to find a drowsy but decidedly indignant Hafsa stumbling out of bed. It seems like the sedative I put in her evening tea did not have the intended effect. Hmm, damn. That's annoying. One of my wives. Oh well, what can you do? Alright. How is this battle going? There's not much change. But our advantage is going up. Which is increasing our damage by 94%. Because we're defending a river crossing and defending in the mountains. That's actually quite good. I didn't realise they were crossing a river to fight us. Um, they get uh, 31 total advantage. So currently, yeah, I don't know if we're going to win though. Because yes, we're inflicting casualties, but it's not, the ratios aren't in our favour. Oh, oh, it, it could be enough for our um, allies to get here though, because they're going to arrive... Oh, 35 days. No, it's not going to be enough time. Yeah, we might lose this battle, but at least it will have delayed um, the Emir over here from sieging Karend. In fact, what we could do is... Man, it is very close. We've routed a thousand of their... Uh, a thousand of their men. Oh! I just slew... I slew Rostam. He died in battle, slain by Tamas Gavbare, the um, the expert uh, mountaineer that we have in our in our forces. That's interesting. Um, so we are now the head of the Dalamite culture, which means we can change the innovation that we're focusing on. So right now we're fascinated by mustering grounds, um, which will increase the size of our men at arms regiments and the maximum number of men-at-arms regiments we can have. 
but uh, we are exposed. What are we exposed to? Usually, you can be fascinated by a particular um, innovation, but you're usually also exposed to one. Um, oh, it is mustering grounds. That's what we're exposed to. Okay, so yeah, we should we should make sure the fascination we have lines up with the exposure because it'll be the fastest um, time to unlock it. So it'll only take 29 years, whereas if we try and focus on banners, which we're not exposed to, it'll take 69 years. So we're better off just staying on this one. Uh, and then once this is uh, unlocked, the exposure will switch to the next one, whichever, whichever one we're next exposed to, uh, and then we can just switch to that. So it's a much faster way of unlocking them. Of course, you can also get innovations by merging your culture with another culture that has the innovations that you want um, and creating a hybrid culture, and we'll certainly do that at some point. Mm. I, think, uh, I think, yeah, I think that battle is going to be lost. Before we lose, let's maybe retreat retreat up this way so we don't get captured so yeah we lost that battle but only worth one uh, one percent of war score anyway uh, we took 136 losses whereas they took 371 um, so yeah three to one kill ratio so if you know if we had maybe 800 900 troops we might have won that um, actually but yeah what can you do it is what it is at least it bought some time for our allies to get in range. And um, yeah, now our nephew is actually the ruler of these titles. Who's the next in line? Okay. Line of succession, it would be... Okay, there's still a few more in the Bavended house, so it wouldn't come to us at all. So yeah, we'll still need to conquer those lands. But that's alright. Uh, Marzuban, a commoner, was slain during the Battle of... Samulkan. Was he one of our... I think he might have been one of our knights. That's a shame, yeah. Oh well, nothing I can do about that. Uh, new law. Our liege has passed the limited crown authority law. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I think... I think this army will win. Even though they'll be attacking in mountains. Um, it should be... It should be a win. Let's see, though. Yeah, negative 8. Not ideal. 23 advantage versus 29. But this army might... Where are they going? Why are they going back the other way? They're only at war with me. And so are you. So I'm not sure why they're retreating. Maybe they're going to siege something? No, they're going to siege Kuwa. Okay. Alright, maybe I should have only retreated to the Arg of Abivard so that we could join that battle. But it looks like... Um, Looks like our guys will win. So we'll just speed that up. Amir Ibrahim of Herat was taken prisoner by Amir A. Amaran Yaqub of Safarid after he won the Battle of Tun. So our liege is losing his war against the Safarids, which means that Nishapur might soon be uh, under Safarid control. And we've won that army there, which is good. Because I want to siege down the Vilia of Firim. As soon as we're back in the game, let's just speed up there. Okay. So our troops are back. Let's go. We'll siege down the Xandaran first. Earned authority. My pursuit of the Tahirid Grand Amirate is not driven by a mere lust for power, but because I am the only one who can bear the enormous responsibility. Even Amir Amaran Muhammad seems to acknowledge this, as he grants me increasingly important tasks in service of the realm. Soon, I might as well be ruling the Grand Emirate in all but name. So, we'll gain stress, but we'll also get plus 20% scheme success chance, which we don't really need. Better to lose the stress, to be honest, because we are overstressed. I clearly do not stand alone in my ambition to rule the Tahirid Grand Emirate. Ravens have been gathering, gathering on the roofs of Amir Amaran Muhammad's castle, and a few nights ago, even the stars seemed to be falling all over Tahirid. Peasants and nobles alike whisper that it is a sign that Muhammad has lost the favor of Allah. Um, again, we don't need more success chance, so let's just take the piety. 
which gets us back to positive piety. I don't know why they're embarking. They're probably going to land there and try go for the castle. So, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we need to get back over there. Okay, no, good. They're not, they're not going to stick around there. That's good. After all my hard work, it is finally time to present the evidence I have come across that I am in fact the rightful heir to the Tahirid Grand Amirate through an old dynastic marriage. Amira Amaran Muhammad will be nothing more than a simple pretender as long as he stands in my way. So 90% chance that we'll gain a pressed claim on the Tahirid Grand Amirate, and only a 5% chance that our fabrications are discovered. So hopefully that works out. Uh, obviously can't let them siege Karen there. Finally, no one can doubt the fact that I have a reasonable claim on the Tahirid Grand Amirate. While the exact details of the old dynastic marriage are shrouded in the mists of time, there is no reason to doubt its veracity. Even Amir -e Amaran Muhammad must admit my claim is a legitimate one. Nothing can stop me now. So he becomes my rival. I think that's because we're ambitious. Or maybe it's just because we have I have a press claim on his kingdom. Um, in any event, that's good. We have a claim there. Um, so we can start a claimant faction. We can also challenge him to a fight to inflict stress if we win. Or we can request an incursion. Seek the aid of a Turkic warlord to invade and destabilize this ruler. Oh, that's really interesting. So we can get the Khazars to invade, <laughs> to invade our kingdom. And they'll do it for 155 gold. Oh, wow, interesting. And we can do that against the Abbasids as well, and it is a lot cheaper, it only costs 78 gold, but they uh, they will want military support and extra money to accept, because he's obviously a much larger target to attack. Anyway, that's something we can deal with at a later date. Um, let's move... Just wondering if we should maybe try and summon more levies. Uh, it looks like our guy's coming back over here might give us an opportunity to go and siege okay they're leaving now that's okay yeah that's okay out even if we engage them our allies will come and uh, defend us so that's fine we can take out those reinforcements so they'll get there in you know what, let's raise our additional troops. Which is just the knight. Fantastic. Uh, and I want to go over there to Baruspan. So we've won the victory there. Very good. Betrothed can marry. Ah, oh, yes. Yep, that's fine. Get that marriage done. Are there any other alliances that we can maybe get now? Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, I wish we could tick the use piety box and see um, what better allies we can get. Let's just have a quick look around to see if there's anyone here who... Uh, Anyone nearby, I mean, that might have some children we can marry, and has a lot of troops. Now you've got 1,500 troops. What about some of... Yeah, like you've got 1,400, 500, 1,200, 1,000... Actually, what about... No, you still don't have any children. I mean, you're not bad. 1,200. And uh, you don't have any children. You've got siblings, but they're all men. And that's your son. So that's no good. Um, what about some of... Still only sons. That's my wife already. What about this guy? Still only have sons. Hmm. 
Ah, there you go. You've got a princess, but I doubt you'll marry her off to me. Yeah, different religion and all that. Um, Basra, maybe? No. What about these kingdoms up here? You've got sons. Do you have any female siblings? No. What about ogres? Okay. Ah, oh, you've already got a husband. Unfortunately. What about Kazaria? No. Zetsu? I think that's a, a male. Um, is that also a male? I don't know. Where does it say gender? I'm pretty sure that's a boy. Yeah. Alright. What about some of the Indian kingdoms? They still don't have any progeny. Oh, you've got a young daughter. You won't accept, though, because too many existing alliances. She'd be marrying down. Okay. And we can't use piety because she's not a Muslim. You can only use piety for other Muslim faiths. Okay, no one to marry there. I guess maybe we just, we just do it this way. Get the best alliance we can. So that's 926, 915. An alternative would be to sort by sum of all skills, and maybe we just start getting some children. Maybe let's do that. We've got decent allies at the moment. Like, we're okay, I think. Let's keep going towards Bardo's farm over there. We can turn that off. Actually, will she join my court? No, still won't. That's alright. Okay, they're leaving. Oh, I wanted to go there, actually. Not to the city. I wanted to go to the castle. Uh, we can join Valley Suleiman's hunt. Yeah, we can do that. I'll leave the marshal commanding it, because he's better at sieges. Uh, this will lose stress, potentially. So, yeah, let's go to the grasslands of Gurgen, which is just over here. So a short journey. We can potentially gain prestige, stress, the hunter trait, etc, etc. It seems worthwhile. We don't have to pay the costs this way. We will get a desert warrior. Yeah, we'll hire a desert warrior just to try and reduce danger. Hmm. Should I hire mercenary guards as well? No, I don't think I will. I'll just I'll just hire the desert warriors. We'll join them. And yep, we'll go on the hunt. My acquaintance, Valley Suleiman, is hosting a hunt in Gurgen, and time has come for us to depart. I should be able to proudly represent the house of Karanid. This should be good sport if the event is properly organized which we'll find out, I suppose. And I visited the Wall of Gorgon, and so got 200 martial lifestyle experience. Very good. As we await the arrival of the rest of the guests, Vali Suleiman has started on the preparations. His gamekeepers check the grasslands each day for signs of quarry, while building a camp closer to the hunting grounds. I've checked my gear and horse many times. It won't be long now. Great. Um, and yeah, we'll focus on recreation, so that we um, lose stress. Naib Cameron assembles the party as the sun rises over the camp in the plains near Gurgen. After, piercing, after piecing together information from the few local gamekeepers, there is some talk about the tracks and fumes nearby. While there is sadly no sign of a buck in the area, there are evidently plenty of hares. Ultimately, Valley Suleiman decided he wanted to hunt a hare today. Let's get out there. Alright, so yeah, we'll go for recreation. See how we go with that. 
start sieging Vardishban down. Hey, our liege is actually winning his war. They must have won a decisive battle, and yeah, they did. They seem to have crippled the Safarid army. That's actually good for us. We don't want our liege to get completely knocked out by the Safarids. Nishapur is a pretty valuable duchy, and I'd rather have it in the kingdom when I take control of the throne. Um, so that's actually quite good. Um, uh, let's have a look at this power sharing window. So yeah, our wife is our regent. And right now, possible mandate effects are extra gold, free domain development, and feudal contracts adjusted in the liege's favor. Characters and county, boost crown authority. Let's use the swell armies. Beneficial men-at-arms modifiers, beneficial levy modifiers, and skilled knights as well. Um, and scales of power are quite low, so we don't need to do anything about that at the moment. I think that's all fine. Yeah, I think that's all fine. Okay. So we're in a regency there. We also captured some enemy combatants. Uh, where did we keep prisons again? Over here. No, we can't ransom him. Can we recruit him? Demand his conversion. I don't care about his conversion. But yeah, let's get him um, to join us. He's got 12 prowess, which isn't bad. I'd rather have him fight on our side. So he accepts that. So he should become one of our knights, I think. Yeah, he will. Once, uh, once we disband the troops. Where are they going? Under my wing, my party and I stalk through a copse, eyes peeled for any sign of a hare. From the canopy above, a soft twittering spills forth, growing louder as we advance. It is a nestling screeching for its mother. An agile huntsman brings down a fluffy ayas, an unfledged raptor chick from the oak. What luck! Only young birds caught in the wild can be properly trained to hunt. So we can get the hunting raptor. Gives us extra prestige, slightly increases our experience. We can gift it to Suleiman, or we can put it back to get immediate prestige and a slight increase to success chance. I think I would rather get the one prestige uh, a month. Well, let's see. One a month for five years. That's... Um, actually, is that that much prestige? It's not, right? It's only 60 prestige. We get the vassal opinion and we get the court grandeur. And it improves our, fal our, our um, falconry hunt success chance if we want to go on falconry hunts. Hmm. Maybe the immediate prestige is better. But maybe we should go on some falconry hunts, so let's, let's keep it and... Yeah, maybe we'll do falconry hunting in the future. My acquaintance, Naib Pagahan, is the first to spot its bounding legs. The swift jack is hard to distinguish, but there's no doubt it's there, observing us through the tree line. Valley Suleiman takes off after the beast, crying, Come, it's getting away. Oh, our ally left us to do the siege on our own. Well, that's okay. Oh, I don't know where our other ally went. Have to have a look. We can hardly keep up with the blasted beast as it darts and weaves through the leafy bushes, squeaking wildly. Scaling a rise and disappearing into a dense thicket, the hare is gone as quickly as it appeared, with only panting dogs and sweaty horses to show for it. The damn thing is gone. Now the hunt fails. What a shock. I don't know where our other ally went. We've got this guy, but... What happened to our other allies? But did he not join? Oh no, that was the guy who never joined anyway. Yeah, you've got troops. I just don't know where they ran off to. Hmm. No, it doesn't matter. As long as we've got some troops around, it's fine. So we gained the hunter trait. 15 experience in it. Everything that could go wrong seemed to do so, but there were silver linings to be found. Naib Nushad gathers the disappointed party and exhausted hounds for the trip home. The hare indeed eluded us this time. So we lose some stress because we're gregarious, gain a little bit of prestige. 
Okay, so not bad. So, slowly getting our stress down. Um, oh, I've swayed him, so he actually probably would join the war now. Yep, he would, but it will cost prestige. I don't think we need to call him in, but good to have that um, in our back pocket if need be. Um, what about for our son there? No, let's not betroth him. I don't want to waste waste him, you know, and get a bad alliance. Okay, Amira Amaran imprisoned a detractor of the Caliphate. Caliph al Mutaz did the same. So we're progressing towards that stabilization phase. So, yeah, let's have a look at this screen. So this is the struggle screen. We're in the unrest phase, which I um, went through all the effects of that in the last episode. There are these struggle endings as well, um, which require certain conditions being met. Uh, and then we can also end a struggle by going into this concession phase. Uh, so the way I think it works is that um, involved and interloper characters will make certain actions. The actions they do will um, trigger these catalysts towards either concession or towards stabilization. Um, if we go to the stabilization phase, then again, these catalysts will trigger towards concession or towards unrest, and we just keep ping-ponging between unrest and stabilization until concession is reached or until one of these struggle decisions is made to end the struggle. So um, I don't think the concession counter resets, whereas each time you go from unrest to stabilization, the uh, counter there does reset. So yeah, that's it. Anyway, we'll have a read of what stabilization is later, I think, once we get this war over and done with. Okay, we're back home. Very good. We're almost done with this siege. And I wonder as well if, um... I wonder if he has any... He has any artifacts or anything. No, he doesn't have any artifacts. Interesting. Did his, um... Pretty sure he had some artifacts from memory. From from what I've seen of some other people who played as Rostam. Um, I think there is a way to search for artifacts, isn't there? Yeah, um, can't remember. Uh, maybe it's if we reset to defaults. Yeah, artifact ownership has any inventory artifact. So what do you have? You've got the gazelle horn. Okay. What about any artifact? Okay, you've just got some. Oh wait, that's in our top realm. But let's just have a look. Let's go all. Uh, we want inside diplomatic range. We want any inventory artifact. And let's say of Islam. You've got the Sasanian sword. I think that's the one that Rostam had. So where are you? Oh, you're all the way down there. Okay, interesting. I wonder how he got that rather than Rostam's son. So it would be good to get that Sasanian sword if we can. Don't know if we can. Mantle of the Prophet. Cool. That's a nice um It's a nice artifact. Uh I don't can we can't steal the artifact from him, can we? Yeah. Seized by Emir after the siege of Mazandaran. Oh, okay. So he got it from Mazandaran. That's how he got it, of course, because he's our ally in the war. Yeah, that's a shame. I was hoping to do that. But anyway. Alright, we now control Badu Span, but we evidently can't... Um, evidently can't end the war until we win one more battle, by the looks of it. 
which I think this will be the last battle, surely. Unfortunately, they, they sieged it down, but... Okay, we unlocked a new martial lifestyle perk. Very good. That's the war done. Oh, we even captured him. Um, now, actually, let's ransom him. Because we'll release him if we enforce the peace. I would rather ransom them off for money. And then, you know, win the war via sieges. Um, for the martial perk, let's get... Let's get the extra knights, and then we'll keep going down. Yeah, keep going down that, that path there. Because it's, it's easy enough to resiege something. And we might even still be able to enforce the peace. I oh, know we can't, but we can just resiege this. I don't mind. In fact, like, the longer we stay at war, the more stuff we siege, the better, probably. So we got nine gold from that. Alright, let's let's end end it there then. Uh, so we will get the Sheikdom of Badruspan uh, and the Vilia of Larijan. We'll gain 15 fame, uh, 15 prestige to our allies for their contribution. I think that's fine. Very good. Okay, let's uh, send our troops home now. And we'll have a truce with him, unfortunately, for a little bit so we can't take Mazandaran as well. But that's fine. Next up on the chopping block, I think, needs to be... Well, actually, should it be our liege? He's got 3,500 troops. We cannot afford the cost of this war. Oh, yeah, we don't have enough prestige. And we've got 6,800 troops versus his 3,500. He's got 350 gold, though, so he could pretty easily get some mercs going um yeah just wondering should I move my capital because that's Mount Damavand alright let's have a look because Kerend is a useless settlement if we have a look at it right it's it's not the um capital of the duchy the capital of the duchy is um is here the Arg of Gergen because this duchy is Gurgen, uh, and only the capital of a duchy gets the duchy building slot, so Karen doesn't have that. It doesn't have any interesting buildings either, like the Great Wall of Gorgon, um, and the rest of it's completely undeveloped, so it's not a good settlement, really. Um, whereas Bautuspan, what do we have here? Well, we've got only three slots rather than four, but at least one of them's developed. Uh, we've got a similar amount of building slots, it's only a hill fort, whereas this is a mot, but that's in addition, sorry. So this is actually, this is a castle mot as well, but it's got this extra hill fort building, which makes it a lot more defensible. Um, and it's got this Mount Damavan, which is a special building, increasing the stationed men-at-arms toughness, reducing danger, increases levy size in mountains, stress loss plus 10%. I think we make this our capital. Yeah, I think let's do that. And I'm going to move the levies to raise over here. And I will change where our men-at-arms are stationed. I'll station them in Firim over there. Um, and let's increase the size of the Zupin Spearmen as well. And we want to get our marshal on increasing control in this province, which we'll have to wait for time to pass a little bit for that to happen. Um, we triggered some catalysts by imprisoning detractors of the Caliphate. Even though we're a detractor ourselves, it still triggers them. Um, just wondering then, should we maybe then try and get a claim on the county of Gurgen? Or should we just wait, bide our time, wait for him to spend some of his gold, and then go after him? 
or perhaps even... He's got 19 prowess. What's our prowess? 17. Mm. Wouldn't want to challenge him to a fight, necessarily. Um, we go court politics, actually. Does that help our son get a good alliance? No. It does not. Okay. Uh... Hmm. Just tossing up. Just tossing up. Actually, what we can do as a starting point is we can make a claimant faction with us as the, um, the leader. My liege is converting Baduspan to Asharism. That's annoying, but nothing I can do about that. Um, what we... Yeah, maybe let's fabricate a claim on Gurgen. Unfortunately, I can't change our Imam, because he's useless. Oh, I can, by reassigning my steward. No, it's not working. I think that's just a bug. Yeah, it's not going to let me swap him. Real shame. Could, I suppose I could adopt my liege's faith, but I'd need piety to do that. At, le at least our liege seems to have won his war, which isn't great, because it means that he'll then get, um, he'll get a big payout when he wins. Yeah, Emire Amaran Yakub, when Emire Amaran Yakub surrenders, he will pay 300 gold to our liege Muhammad. Um, so yeah, he'll have plenty of money. So we need to wait for him to spend that, otherwise he'll just hire a lot of mercenaries. Uh, we have a new promising recruit, Zand. Oh, Fath, sorry. No, now Marshal Fath has found this guy, Zand. Who's got 20 prowess. Wow, he's excellent. Very well, he can join. Um, and let's get you on increasing control in Baduspan, because we are getting nothing from this province right now because of the um, lack of control. Taxes are pretty much, yeah, minus 100% almost, and levies are reduced a lot as well, so we need to need to remedy that. Um, do we want to do anything else? Construct any buildings? We could get quarries, which increases our tax, but it's probably not worth it. We might be better off just hanging on to the money for the moment, um, just in case we need it to hire mercenaries in any upcoming wars, because we could get, like, the band of Ustjurt over here, which has some bowmen. Um, we probably want to get something that will be helpful against the men-at-arms that our liege has. I don't know if we can see that. We can. So he's got onages, which is fine, and he's also got AR, which are heavy infantry. They counter spearmen. So we want something that counters heavy infantry. Now, our levies are technically spearmen. So, although they counter heavy infantry, they're still themselves countered by heavy infantry, I think. So, um, we definitely need something that counters heavy infantry. So, let's have a look at the mercenaries. They counter skirms. They counter archers. They counter spearmen. Hmm. So we would need... Yeah, we would need, like, the Dalamite Company, for instance. Because they've got light footmen and Zupin spearmen, and they, they all counter heavy infantry. Or the band of Samaj. Um... Dalamite Band of Gurgen wouldn't be bad, but they're very expensive. So Dalamite Company is probably best. But we'll need more money for that. And unfortunately we're not making much money at the moment. Partly due to the men-at-arms expenses, but that's because they are replenishing 
back up to full strength. So they'll be paying full maintenance until they get to 300 in size. We could get some more men-at-arms ourselves. actually. We could get um, some light footmen, because they count heavy infantry. Um, cost, that'll cost 40 gold. So it'd be 120 gold to get it to a stack of 300. Probably better off saving up and getting the mercs. So we'll just leave that, I think. Uh, we do need to do something about our... Yeah, there you go, he won the war. So he's a very rich man now. Hopefully he spends that. We'll just keep an eye on him. When he spends that gold, that might be the time to strike. We do need to... Um, we do need to get our uh, stress down, though. Maybe we should host a small feast to do that. Yeah. Farms and fields. Yeah, we'll host it in Karend there. Um, although, actually, it's very dangerous to travel there. Maybe let's not host it there. Let's host it in... Uh, our capital in Baduspan. We don't need to travel then. Recreation is fine. Uh, it'll only cost 39 gold. Moderate prestige. We do need prestige to declare war. So maybe... Maybe we do that. Not a lot of courses, but lots of prestige. That keeps costs down. Let's do that. The servants run across the hall, bringing the final decorations. Some of the guests are yet to arrive, and I indulge myself with a delicious drink by the fire. Oh, I seem to have spotted some roast swan already. We have a lovely time ahead of us. Great. So I'll get some prestige. Yeah. So actually, we need at least 200 prestige or so to... Um, oh, we learned Scythian. Cool. Is that what she speaks? Don't know where it actually says what language she speaks, but anyway. Oh no, he wasn't swayed. That's bad. Um, maybe let's stop trying to sway him. He likes us enough to join our wars at least, so... Maybe let's seduce our wife instead. A cheery gathering. The guests are gathered in the great hall, lords and ladies from the near and far reaches of the realm. The mood is bright and spirits are high as the feast begins. The great table seating the upper nobility on the dais gave a loud crack, and a moment later it gave in under the weight of food and gilded decoration. As my most distinguished guests and I had to be fitted in among the lower nobility, I ended up close to my sister, Tamina. As high nobles mingled with their lessers, words of both friendship and enmity were exchanged among people who rarely associate. Tamina and I ended up talking all evening, and agreed it should not be the last time we feasted and laughed in each other's company. So she becomes our friend. Um, now, she was actually... She was married to... Yeah, she was married to Rostam, and then to another Bavendid, and now to a Baduspanid. A little bit annoying she didn't come back to our court, because we may, might have been able to get an alliance out of that, but anyway, it's alright. As the feast is underway and our guests are eating and drinking merrily, Valia Hafsa approaches Al Avasa and me at the great table. This is a marvelous feast. All my compliments to the hosts. Uh, yes, I have done a great job, haven't I? Or we can get household efforts. No, I think I'll take credit for that. I need the prestige, so... Sorry to my wife. As my guests leave, they seem to depart in good spirits. I am also relieved to see that Valia Yagana does not depart without saying farewell. We both know we will be seeing each other again soon. Good. 
As plate after plate of food is brought into the great hall, an unmistakable smell reaches me, and I smile. That my impatient court Imam Ali is sensitive to lemon is something I sadly forgot to tell the cook. I bid you all welcome, and I pray you will find the food to your liking. His face as I save him from the food is definitely to my liking. <laughs> I didn't realize he was a dwarf. I just realized. And he's um, a Muslim, so my character, of course, as a Zoroastrian believer, in secret anyway, doesn't like him at all. Um, maybe let's, yeah, enjoy Ali. He's a terrible imam, so if he dies, fine by me. Ah, is there anything more jovial than a good feast? Guests throng to and fro, eating and chatting while flickering torchlight plays off every wall. Light bouncing like laughter around the hall. It's a shame we couldn't get more guests. Just another tableful or so, but not everyone has the party spirit. Not everyone, perhaps, but I do, and I'm as good as a table or two all by myself. Sometimes it's nice to simply sit back and enjoy the little things in life. So we will lose 115 stress, or we can get opinion and only lose 23 stress, or we can gain prestige and only lose 6. No, we'll take... We'll lose all that stress. Great, we're no longer overwhelmed by stress. Few candles survive after the last of the guests has left. I can hear a pair of servants letting out sighs of relief after the doors close. The food is still warm on the ceramic plates. <laughs> it looks like Princess Al Abbasa brawled with her rival Muhammad and they both got wounded. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Soon word will reach every corner of the realm and every noble worth their salt will know that my magnificence is unparalleled. With everyone headed home with bellies full of exotic delicacies, I am proud to say that the feast was a success. Nevertheless, I am still grateful that the endeavor is over for now. So we gain 225 prestige, we lose the rest of our stress pretty much. And we get great banquet for five years. Nice. Very good. Not too happy about our wife getting wounded in a brawl. Oh, maybe it looks like she got healed instantly. Uh, Yagana is ill, unfortunately. Hmm. You can actually change her to the primary spouse. She'd be better as a primary spouse, actually. She's got better stats. Yeah, let's make her the primary spouse. Princess al Abbasa will not like that. But it's better for the realm. All for the realm. Uh, we can negotiate an alliance with our nephew. He's not going to accept. Because he does not like us. Why does he not like us? Title payments. And uh, and he's a supporter of the caliphate. Whereas uh, we're a detractor. Still can't change him. Hopefully he dies. Um, we can get... No, oh, it hasn't updated yet. But once it updates... There we go. We've now got Yagana. She can give us plus 14 to our diplomacy or plus 9 to our martial. Amazing. Amazing. So if we get plus 14 there, what kind of alliances can we get with our son? Still nothing major. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and we've got 818 if we switch her to chivalry. I have an update? Hmm, I guess not. Maybe I'll just leave her on... Uh, Assist ruler. Everyone appreciates a gift, but perhaps I could make up. Uh, perhaps I could come up with something truly unique that will make a real impression on Princess Al Abbasa. Um, yeah, she probably cares about what is she? Gluttonous, arrogant, impatient, an eager reveler. She probably likes the physical pleasures of life or poetry. We'll go with that. I think that worked. Yeah. Uh, and we gained 25 stress because we... Oh, that's an old message. Okay, she liked the poem. Very good. So, scheme success chance increase there. Slowly getting control in, uh, in Firim. Just wondering, uh, there's nothing we can do to speed that up, can we? No, he's already the best marshal we can we can hope for at the moment. Um, yeah, okay. 
At least our levies are, are fine. Not our levies, our um, men at arms. They are costing us 0 0.5 gold a month though. Which is quite a bit, but that's because we're getting nothing out of this province. Okay, Hafs is pregnant, good. We need children for alliances. A reading in Arg of Ferim. The celebrations had come to an end, and the evening's entertainment seemed to be over, when Princess al Abbasa suggested a reading. A clerk soon arrives, wondering what the guests would like to hear, and I see my chance to impress al Abbasa. Um, so we can go for something pious, or something entertaining, or something informative. I think she'd want entertaining. Yep, she's completely engrossed. Good choice. I know. How's our son going anyway with his education? He's pensive and paranoid. Eh. It's not the worst, but it's not the best either. That's okay. And these factions... 15% military power. Has he spent his money yet? He spent some of it. He's getting 10 a month though. And his troop count has gone up. Hmm. Alright. The servants have all been sent away, and our bed has been decorated with seashells. As Princess al Abbasa enters our chambers, she smiles confidently and joins me without any hesitation. With the help of hands, mouths, and limbs, we reaffirm the devotion we swore before Allah, perhaps in a more carnal fashion than intended. Okay, so we lay with her, and yeah, she can become our lover, which is fine. So that's her. Um, I guess let's also seduce Yagana here, because she's chaste, and we'll need to offset that. Ooh, only 35% chance, because chaste dislikes lustful. We can give it a try, I suppose. It looks like we might succeed in getting that county fabrication. In which case, we can probably go to war with him right away. Good, she's pregnant. That's good. He's got 800 troops. Amir Amara Muhammad has declared war on Amir Hassan. Really, for what? For Vali Suleiman's claim on the Emirate of Tabaristan. Oh, that's very unfortunate. I need to then take him out before that war is won. Um, with the babe cradled in her arms, Valia Hafsa looks up at me, head held high and eyes glowing with pride. Husband dearest, could we name her Salma after my impressive mother? Um, who was your mother? Who was your mother? She was an Azrakism. No, I think something else in mind. Let's give her a good Dalamite name. Um. Yeah, whatever. That'll do. Afsane. That's fine. And let's get her on stewardship focus. What alliances can we get from this? Oh yeah, this is where we need to set you to court politics. Find me a good alliance. The Sajid Emirate, that's good. 2,600 troops. That's only 800. Well, I think we have our answer there. He'll accept as well. A gift is certain to catch Valia Yagana's, uh, Yagana's attention, and surely anyone would appreciate a fine, clearly expensive one. Um, I think Vali Yagana is a woman whose loyalty is to her family and dynasty. Well, she's lowborn, so it can't be that. Appreciates activity and the open sky. She's diligent, cynical. Style and making impression. Probably a dress, I would say. Okay, we can get a claim. Oh, it's going to cost 108. Why is it always more expensive than whatever you have? <laughs> um, alright, fine, spend it. Okay, she liked the gift, so we get budding interest. 
which increases the scheme success chance. And we get that alliance, very good. So we can't declare war, unfortunately. Um, we could try and position ourselves uh, to get appointed as the steward for our liege by switching her to manage the main. That'll increase our stewardship skill, makes us get a bit more money. I don't think it's increased it enough though for our liege to consider appointing us, unfortunately. Um, Alright, maybe once we finish this trait, we'll switch to the stewardship focus if we can. Sheik Shervin gained 20 opinion of me, very good. That's done. And more progress towards the stabilization phase. And I think that war is going to be over pretty soon. The dance. I am attending the dance not simply because I am the lord of the castle, but because I want to see Valia Yagana there. She looks resplendent, and when we finally have a moment to ourselves, I offer my suggestion. Join me in the circle for the next dance, my lady. A walk in the garden, away from all this. Could I provide you with some more food? No, join me in the circle for the next dance. We spun across the floor together, turning heads as she laughed to her heart's content. So we get smoldering chemistry. So, the scheme success chance might actually work, even though initially it was, I think, only 35%, it's now up to 70%. So, there's a good chance that we might succeed. We have a son, Gerdzad Karanid. Uh, we're going to name him... Uh, let's name him... <laughs> Istwandad. Now let's go with Fahab. And let's get him on... Mm, Marshal or Diplomatic? Maybe Marshal. And... Again, can we get some good alliances out of this? Nah, not really. It's a shame. Okay. Well, let's get someone to educate him then. I guess we could do it. Or I could get someone with better martial. Yeah, maybe Zand. And sure, you can convert his faith to Mazdayan. I'm fine with that. Um... Let's change you back to Manage Domain. Now getting a gold a month. Ah, oh, we got rejected. You are a fair man, Badaspan, but I do not like you that way, says Vali Yagana, and fists her hands in her dress. Only Allah knows what the future might hold for us. Well, that's a shame. So, she has rejected our seduction scheme. We can try again at a later date, I guess. Alright, um... Accused of decadence. Interesting. Guess we can try seduce the next wife. 55% success chance. Ah, oh, he wants to make me marshal of Tahirid. Okay. To my lecherous vassal, I have come to the inexorable conclusion that you truly are the best candidate I have for my open council position. Though it pains me to do so, I am unfortunately obligated to offer you the position of Marshal of Tahirid. Okay, that's fine. Increases our income slightly. Uh, uh, he's going to win that war, though, before, before we get an opportunity to declare our war. Which is obviously not good. We've unlocked a new perk for the Marshal lifestyle. Very good. Faction created against us. Peasant rabble. Okay. Um... Uh, we'll gain budding interest. She'll get a weak hook on me, though. A mirror chinchanch of the Sajid Emirate. It's very close to her mother. Gaining her favor. Yeah. Now, let's just get... Weak hook is fine. Don't know what her mum would use that for, to be honest. Um, let's get Serve the Crown. And can we switch? No, we still can't, so maybe we just get one more trait in this tree as well.
Very good, so we get budding interest. Sweaty, tired, and in need of food, a long day of training with the troops is coming to an end. As we search for a place to camp, we spot an old and abandoned castle in the distance. Widening my stance, I declare, that is where we will make our camp tonight. The sun is setting, and with every step towards the ruin, it looks more ominous. Before long, the soldiers are whispering about ghosts. Um, so we can raise the tents outside to get plus two advantage. Now let's venture inside. I'm sure there's treasure to be found. Darkness, dampness, and desolation reign inside the castle, and all traces of life are gone. Peering up decaying stairs, I spot what might be the remnants of lush tapestries and old paintings. Looking down spiraling steps, I see only darkness reaching far down into the ground underneath the castle. So, hmm. 15% chance we get, um, we lose dread and gain stress, or an 85% chance we get the brave trait. Which increases our likelihood of dying in battle, but also increases the maximum battle roll in mountains and desert mountains by plus three and our martial and prowess, or we can search the upper floors and we'll either get, I mean, we could get 75 gold out of it, which is quite good, but getting brave is also quite good. Meh. Kind of need the money more than I need brave. Ah, bam, we only got 15. But that takes us out of debt. Um, oh, did he win the war? Or did the war... I think the war ended. I don't think our liege is at war anymore. Yeah, I think... Okay, so, I wonder why the war ended. I think his dad died. Yeah, Suleiman Ab Abdelazde of Gurgen died after a botched, a botched uh, treatment, and that caused the war to end because the war was to press his claims. So that's really good for us, actually. I'll let those peasants um, win, and then we'll declare war against uh, Gurgen there. To my cocky vassal, my court is going on tour, and I shall soon be visiting Baduspan to receive a fine banquet in your castle. The lords and ladies of Khorasan will render the tithes owed to me. I expect a welcome befitting an Amir, a, an Amir -e Amaran. I must see to the preparations, yeah. Maybe this will be an opportunity to kill him off. Is there anything I can do in preparation for that? Don't think there is. Anyway, that's fine. We're getting lots of money now. 1.2 gold a turn. My dear uncle, I eagerly propose to formalize the ties that already bind us together by signing an alliance between our realms. Um, mm, mm. Oh, wait a minute. Um, no, I don't know if I want to do that. Interesting, he's sterile. We still have a truce with him, don't we? Yeah. No, I think not. Because I, I want to take Mazandaran eventually. Ah, our wife is pregnant. Very good. Okay, she rejected us as well. There. Shame. Alright. So we can now declare war on you. You've got no allies. I've got plenty of allies, um, 8,000 troops worth of allies, but we won't need to call them in for this war, I don't think. I think having our um, troops should be sufficient. Yeah, 1,000 troops there. Um, and do we want to command it? No, no, we're busy preparing for our lieges tour. Hmm. What, what's the terrain here? Plains. Yeah, may as well just leave this guy in charge of the army then. Great, I have another son. We'll call him... Nod. <laughs> Let's call him... Uh Faramars, yeah, sounds a bit like Faramir. Oh, he's sterile, interesting. Okay. Well, we won't get much in terms of alliance, but maybe we will. We're getting more out of him. 
Sure, let's arrange him off that way. We'll make him learning education focused. And we will get our steward to educate him. Very good. More allies, always good. Should be an easy win. Asma got wounded. Ah, oh, even better, we imprisoned him. Now, do we want... Now, let's ransom him. Um, and then we'll siege it down and win the war anyway. Because it's a fairly quick siege. If we have a look at it here. Uh, there's only a small garrison there, 86 men. And uh, the siege is progressing fairly quickly. So... I'd rather get the money from him. Now we're back up to 60 gold there. And yes, it means we have to siege it down, but that's fine. Probably won't do that anyway. We have another son. Yeah, let's call him Kudaya. And we'll make him a martial focused little trooper as well. Um... I'm not going to bother with any of those. We'll get you to be educated by... I guess I'll do it then. Oh, actually, should I get my marshal to do it? No, I'll get you to do it. And you can convert faith as well. Alright, so, yeah, we triggered... Amira Amaran Muhammad triggered a catalyst by vassalizing an independent ruler. Who did he vassalize? Hmm. Not sure. Oh, the Gurid Amirate. I think that's who he vassalized. Interesting. Our court physician's knowledge has increased. That was me imprisoning that chap, and every courtier gained 10 opinion of me. Okay, very good. That's all quite good. Let's keep that siege going. By the time they're finished retreating, we'll have um, sieged this down. And then once we get uh, Mazander and we'll have united this little area. I think we'll keep our capital in Firim. Okay, we'll siege down some of these other places as well. Spouse, broadening horizons. While you know a thing or two about ancient military campaigns, the Vali of Dihistan should possess a broad range of skills, Mavalia says, rearranging her blouse. I could acquire some new terms, prepare a few assignments, tutor you a little. What subject are you most interested in? Um, that is a good question. Diplomacy, stewardship, spy, uh, maybe stewardship, realm economy. Liege passed the friendly succession law, okay. Okay, they're just gonna sit there, they don't have enough troops to attack us and... They know if they start sieging it down, we'll attack them. Baruspan, my dear friend, I was once again reminded of your victory against Amir Hassan, so I decided to write a poem about your triumph, Tamina says, clearing her throat. Quarrel in Dihistan, a work of poetry dedicated to Vali Baruspan's victory over the miserable Amir Hassan, written by Baruspan's good friend Tamina. Through conf uh, though conflict brings wrath to all some day, our hero lives to enter the fray. Then all shall tremble as he takes field, all fire and fury and thundering wield. That's pretty nice. We get the Quarrel in Dihistan artifact. Gives us a bit of prestige and tax contribution from powerful vassals. Or we can send a copy to everyone Hassan knows for a bunch of prestige. And we'll also get the... Um, the artifact there. We can destroy it for piety. No, I'll send a copy to everyone <laughs> Amir Hassan knows. Great. 
and we are now distinguished with our level of fame, which is good. Uh, what effects does that have? Just more knights and secular opinion, okay. Siege is almost done. Okay. And I think if we win this battle, it should end the war in our favor. Yep. Cool. Uh, and we captured some people. Let's, before we end the war, let's see who we captured there. We captured Azad. Okay. If I recruit you, he'll accept. Now, I won't bother... I won't bother converting his faith. But, you know, he's a good... a good knight. May as well fight for us, my friend. Alright, so we got him. And now we can enforce that. We'll get the Vilia of Gurgen and all the holdings therein. Very good. Alright, so let's disband that army and we'll equip the trinket there that we unlocked. Uh, we can create the Duchy of Gurgen. We don't have enough money for it. We need um, 250 gold, unfortunately. Okay, you're still alive as soon as you die and then go to war with you. So what's our position as against you now? You've got half the amount of troops we have, but that's assuming all our allies join, and I don't know if they would, necessarily. So I think we'll just bide our time a little bit more. How much gold do you have? 669, yeah. Got a lot of money. So, Gurgen is the duchy capital. I don't know what the duchy capital is for... I think it's actually Mazandaran. Yeah, it is. It's Mazandaran. Vazaded. Um, but that's okay. Just wondering what we'd be better off um, having as our capital. I think still probably Firim. Just because it's so much more defensible. Um, but some of these places are pretty good. I mean, this has got increased fort level as well. Yeah, we'll definitely need to increase control in Gurgen once, uh, once it's at 100 in Firim over here. As I lean over the map in the council chamber, a sudden creak turns my head towards the door. My son, Vahab, appears in the hallway, toddling up to me at a surprising speed for his age. He wraps himself firmly around my leg, hugging me tight and leaning his head back to look up at me. I look at him, a hidden tear in my eye, while my hand is stroking his hair in an effort to reciprocate the gesture. You're a good son. Oh. Alright, so we won that. We have a new law, Harmonious Succession. Interesting. He's got a lot of house unity. Our nephew was imprisoned. And, yeah, he won the war against our nephew against the tyranny of... Okay, so he was rebelling. And he's now lost his title as a result. So now this guy holds the title that should be ours. Amir Hassan, one of war started against another involved ruler of the same tier or higher. Okay. So we're getting pretty close now towards the stabilization phase. M more than halfway there. And we can appoint a tax collector. Alright. Uh, you've got average aptitude. Sure, you can be a tax collector. There's only one taxpayer, and that's the, uh... Naib Kuriya of Astarabad. Which is this guy. Okay. Are there not other... Taxpayers that should be added here? I guess not. Anyway, that's fine. What? Why is he going to war with the Caliph? 
Alright, anyway, let's get to that in a second. For some reason, our legion has declared war on Caliph Al-Mutaz. To the charming Badaspan, I have been corresponding with your Chancellor, Ardavan, and I must say that I have come to see you in a new light. Perhaps you are even someone that I one day would be proud to call my friend. Okay, your silver tongue is shining today, Ardavan. Very good. Any possible alliances out of this? Hmm. Still nothing amazing. The burden of tax farming. As I take a stroll in the castle, I pass by the library, where my tax collector Navid seems to be in a quite a despondent state. Oh god, he mumbles to himself, I cannot do this. These tax law treatises are too old, too vague, too disorganized. How am I ever meant to find anything in here? I only wanted to check a minor detail before heading out to the provinces again. So I can help him have a look. Um, and he'll increase his skills and lose stress if I succeed. Or I can tell him to do his work or I'll have him flogged. Or I can just walk along. No, I'll, I'll help him have a look. Cool, he gained new focus. Very good. Our nephew was released from prison. Uh, he won't join my court though. Don't know what he's going to do. He's just going to live on the street, I guess. I don't know why our liege went to war. To unify the Tahirid house. Ah, oh, okay, he wants the Duke of Fars to join Khorasan. Well, that'll chew up his money and his troops. Um, so I think that actually is fine. He might actually even win. But once his armies are out of the way and busy down there, that might be a good time for us to declare war. The enemy of Rome. While studying the tactics of ancient generals, I was amazed to learn about the exploits of Hannibal Barca during the Second Punic War. Known as the Enemy of Rome, Hannibal's crowning achievement was the Battle of Cannae, where his army of roughly 50,000 outmaneuvered and encircled the larger 86,000 strong Roman army. Surrounded and unable to retreat, only 3,000 Romans survived the massacre. Like Hannibal, I will annihilate my enemies so we can get aggressive attacker or logistician, he was a true master of Fabian tactics. Or flexible leader, versatility was Hannibal's greatest strength. Yeah, I think let's lean into the mountains and desert mountains. Badospan knows how to reduce the advantage defending armies get from fortifications, terrain, rivers, and straight crossings. Let's do that. Flexible leader. Not bad. Desert warrior, flexible leader. We're like the Persian Rommel. Very good. Okay. Um, play on then. Play on. Architectural expertise. Nice. She has become better at stewardship. This kind of makes us better at stewardship as well. We're getting two gold a month now. Very, very good. And we have another lifestyle perk and we can actually switch now to another focus um uh, question is do i want to that is the question we could get the gallant trait if we stay in marshall strict organization will make it go 20 percent faster plus five defender advantage hmm <laughs> or organized march to increase the movement speed. Parthian tactics, but we don't really have anything that can make use of that. Actually, what are our levies comprised of? Does it tell you? No, it doesn't tell you. Levies are just levies. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we can't really make use of Parthian tactics. Uh, strict organization would be good. Um, so would Peacemaker. Because it means that we only need to get to 90% war score to enforce peace, pretty much. A defeated army reduces the amount of casualties they take in the aftermath aftermath of a battle by their army's combined screen value. Now, we're not planning on losing battles, though. 
Hmm. Maybe strict organization. And then the question is, do we switch off to something else, or do we stay on? That would be good to get, Ducal Conquest. For the um, title creation cost reduction and the Casus Belli. Golden Obligations is good if you get hooks. If you don't get hooks, it's not as good. Vassal tax contribution, we don't have any really. Hmm. It's a good question. This gives plus five advantage. We could really stack advantage, like if we got this one and this and um and gallant as well does gallant give advantage no but if we got like chivalry focus and that one and we were defending and leading the army we would have like an insane amount of advantage it'd be like 50 50 plus <sighs> let's go foreign affairs and we'll get because what do we want from this we want ducal conquest And maybe forced vassalage. Mm, yeah. I think that's really all we need from there. True ruler's not bad, but that requires a lot of points to unlock. I think those three is doable. So let's go foreign affairs. Juices out Marshall, but, um, but that's alright. Alright, and I guess we just wait, see how our liege's war goes, wait for him to get weak, and then, um, learn the language of an involved ruler, okay. Low control, yeah, Gurgans, we need to sort Gurgan out, once, once Firim's back up to 100. The apple falls, lately I've been pondering the education of my son Vandermid, is scholarship really the appropriate direction? Since being trained in warfare myself, I have found that particular knowledge ser uh, to serve me well. Surely it would do the same for him. Personally, tutor Vandermid to make up for any lost education. No, yeah, let's 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 let him keep heading down the learning path. I think that's fine. Our wife Yugana is pregnant again. Very good. Very good. We've only we've only had one child with her. Actually, we might even be able to get uh, other wife is pregnant too. We might even be able to get some alliances now with Vandermid. Now that we're um, leaning down the diplomacy path, mm, still not really actually. Surprisingly. about you? Yeah, okay. Let's keep, uh... Yeah, let's keep managing the domain then. So that I keep making money. Money's good. going. He's doing alright actually, he's actually winning. He's, he's besieging down here. Vahab's educator Zand died, how did he die? Internal injuries, oh, that's a shame. Alright, let's find him another martial guardian. Um... Yeah, alright, I guess... I guess he can do it. Of 
almost done there. Mira Amaran is being attacked by leader Farhang of the Peasant Revolt. Okay. That's fine. Anything that pulls his troops down is okay. We have a dangerous faction here. Peasant Rabble in Gurgen and Dihistan. That's alright. What's in a name? Let us name him Baduspan after you. Uh, no, I had something else in mind. Let's name him... Nod. <laughs> I like that name. Let's name him, yeah, Zachariah, maybe. Farhad. I like Farhad. Shizzle, Zartosht. I like Zartosht too, let's go Zartosht. Uh, and we'll make him a martial diplomacy. Make him a diplomacy child. And yeah, you can uh, you actually you can educate him. Cynical, diligent, arbitrary, lustful, honest. Uh, we'll get you to do it actually. Um, convert culture. No, don't worry about that. same alliances, that's fine. Okay, almost at a hundred control there, very good. So now let's get you on... Let's get you on Gurgen then, which has a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of, yeah, unfortunate modifiers on it at the moment. Until 11 December 883. Damn. That's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Okay, we have another son here. We'll call him... Uh, Darius, yeah, that's a good name. We'll make him Marshall. And, yep, our Marshall can educate him. And maybe we should employ a wet nurse now, so let's start a search for that. Um, we can recruit another mountain specialist, I'll do that. We get Gavbare Asaba, 22 Marshal. You are going to be our new, our new, um, where are you? Yeah, you're going to be our new head man. Head man, our new Marshal. So he'll just be better at it. Um, should we make this guy, he wants a seat on the council, no alliance is powerful clan vassal. Okay, I don't know what that means. It means we have to make an alliance with him, does it? Probably. Uh, I won't make him the steward then, if he's not going to have positive opinion of me, no point. Council we've got at the moment is fine. Except for Ali, who's managed to survive the food poisoning I gave him at the feast. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Alright, so it'll take four years to get control up to 100 in Gurgen, but our marshal's working on it. Court tutor. We could appoint him, he's quite good. It'll cost 0.5 gold. Personal champion. I uh, don't think we need to do that. Seneschal, maybe. Could be an idea. Control growth plus 0 0.2 a month. That's going to cost 0 0.5 gold as well. It's a bit too expensive. If we leave it there. I was only thinking about the court tutor just because we've got a lot of children now. Alright, so, for a wet nurse, we can go for Zarendocht, or Mardocht. Can we appoint anybody else as wet nurse? No, no one actually meets the current requirements. 
All right, let's go. How old are you? 25. You're 21. Now uh, let's go with Sarandok. It's a big difference. Impeccable household. Cool, we get some prestige. Nice. I wish she'd get us some money though, but prestige is good. The family craft. I'm just finishing up the day's business in my council chambers when my courtier Valia Hafsa saunters in with her brother Abdul Wahad eagerly at her heels. I put down the ledger I was just reading, knowing no good can come from this unexpected visit. Hafsa hesitantly remarks upon my appearance. My liege, you are a mighty and powerful valley, but some do not yet give you the respect you deserve. You need something to demonstrate your authority. My brother could smith a fine set of regalia that would reflect your status. Sponsor him and see how his creation will improve your mood. Mm. Okay, grow closer to forming a rivalry with her. Fund him 53 to forge regalia. Uh, it, uh, it might work out alright though. And that might be cheaper than what it would normally cost to fund that. Let's give it a try. Metalsmith Inspiration funded. Let's see what happens. My Aswar Abdul Wahad approaches me with a thoughtful expression. Is there anyone special to you, my lord? He must read my irritation at such a personal question from my face, because he continues. I mean, is there anyone you wish to dedicate your commissioned artifact to? It is turning out well, but a meaningful inscription would make it uh, feel even more personal. So I could dedicate it to God for prestige, or to Yagana. She'll gain opinion of me, but she already likes me. May as well get the prestige. Keep up appearances that we're a, a, a Muslim, and not secretly practicing uh, Kuramism. <laughs> Decision available. Find a new faith for Persia. Ah, convert to Imamism. Oh, okay, we can actually pick any of these faiths and convert. And we'll get an influx of religious settlers gaining levy size, tax, development growth, and popular opinion. Interesting. The Caliph has a stranglehold on Persia, promoting a faith brimming with Arabic orthodoxy. I believe that the region needs its own identity, and there are many options for me to choose from. Inshallah. Mm. No, we're not going to do that. And I'll turn off the notification because I won't ever be doing that decision. We can even reveal our true faith. But I don't think it would be wise to do that right now while we're still a vassal of um, this fellow. Speaking of him, how's this war going? Oh, he's taken some losses. Yeah, he's still got a lot of gold though. What about the Caliph? What's he getting up to? He's got troops, but not much gold. I wonder if we can sponsor an incursion. We can. We can ask Kazaria to do it. But we need more gold. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, we would have to rustle up some coins somehow. Coming out to play, I'm sure Tarmina's relationship with her spouse Paduspan is a very happy and productive one, but lately she has less and less time to spend with me, a dear friend, as their relationship deepens. Every time I try and get her out for even anything simple as a walk, she is apparently tied down with, mar uh, with marital duties. I miss the good old days when we would have ourselves a great night watching the local drunkards fall over and embarrass themselves. What times we had. If only that wretched false Paduspan wasn't keeping us from having that fun, uh, from having that again. Perhaps I can make them see the error of their ways. A wedge is driven between them, neither of them are happy with you. No, I don't want to do that. We're just going to gain stress for no reason. He's very competent at his craft. Hey, that's good. It might turn out quite well then. Inspiration, considered opinion. My metalsmith Abdul Wahad updates me on his progress, droning on about the limits of tongs and bellows as my mind reels with bold ideas for my regalia. Making may not be my personal forte, but that doesn't mean I can't have a say in how my money is spent. So, I have a few suggestions. Our ideas could work well, or they could 
not work well. We'll gain stress. Um, now let's give it a try. See how that turns out. That's the peasant revolt there. Mismanaged land. My tax collector Narvid provides a report of his latest survey of the realm and outlines a matter of great concern. My liege, the way that Naib Kudayar manages his lands is completely unacceptable. Much more could be done with the lands of the Starabad should they have a competent caretaker. So I can get Instructive Tax Collector, or I can teach him a few things myself. It's worth it, it's worth it I think, to try to get 50 gold. Let's, let's give that a try. Ah, failed, damn it. Okay, gain some experience in the position trait. Okay, County of Gurgen lost the incompetent tax collection, very good. While surveying the market streets, I encounter a distressed Mutasib, Mozafar, attempting to enforce market regulations amongst the peddlers. Disorderly arrangements, oil beside mosque doors, unskinned rabbits and cheese in bowls. By Allah, you all better listen to me right now. The Mutasib should be punishing market transgressions with violence if necessary. However, he is being ignored by the greed-blinded merchants. What can I do to aid him? Okay, so I can try use my diplomacy. Or I can... Yeah, why should rules get in the way of business? Control growth. Minus 40% in Baduspan. I'll lose prestige. Hmm. Or I could gain Dread and get Smooth Market Oversight. Threaten to call Akadi. Mutasib corrects the path of misguided merchants. Uh, oh, Mutasib correct the path of misguided merchants. Akadi punish them according to their judgment. The merchants obey your word but remain unconvinced. Or Smooth Market Oversight. But this will guarantee that we get smooth market oversight. And we gain some dread. Or I'll go with that one. Display of diligence. I mean, there's nothing wrong with getting a little bit of dread. Nothing wrong with dread. To the rattling valley Baduspan, we have been burdened with your oppressive laws for far too long. No more. We are done paying you taxes. Um, no. <laughs> Once your coffers dry up and your larders are empty, you will wish you had treated us more fairly. Alright, so that's going to be a peasant revolt over here. Never. Peasant's lot is to serve. Who knows, maybe even our liege will go and defeat that army, but just in case, we'll raise all our troops. Yeah, and he supported that task because he can't do it while there's rebels there, so we'll get him on train commanders, just until we defeat the peasants. Okay. There we go. That's that done. negotiate his release and recruit him. Uh, actually, I maybe maybe I can now that he has lost. Yeah, I could recruit him. Um, uh, he'd be a pretty good knight, actually. So let's let's recruit him. We can disband those troops. Okay, so he doesn't like us very much, but who cares? He'll get over it. Um, and yeah, I mean, we've got some pretty decent knights now. Fairly decent, anyway. Alright. So let's put our marshal back on increasing. Ah. That's annoying. Put him on there quickly, because that'll go up fairly fast. 
I hear a commotion from my son Faramars's chambers. Hastening inside, I see the wet nurse Zarendoft is playing with Faramars. My liege, perfect timing. Faramars just took his first step, she, s she shouts excitedly. Holding my boy's hands, she tries to walk him around the room. A giant step for a child, a small step for a ruler. <laughs> what else can he do? Faramars gains 50 stress but increases his prowess. And I lose stress because I'm ambitious. <laughs> do I want to stress out my poor son? My poor sterile son? Yeah, what else can he do? <laughs> I think I'm impressed by walking. I've been doing it for years. Years, I tell ya. Faction targeting me is disbanded. Very good. I can't force anyone to join me. Unfortunately. We'd need to get some books on them. Inspiration realized. Over here, my lord, my Aswar Abdul Wahad waves me over with a wide grin. I have toiled many days and nights, and finally my work is done. He presents me with an object wrapped in cloth, and as I lift the fabric my eyes grow wide. An ornate regalia set of excellent craftsmanship. It consists of a silver scepter set with pieces of jasper, fine wool robes that have been embroidered with wool, and uh, a large jasper cabochon necklace. Masterwork regalia. Fertility, prestige, and tyranny loss. Oh, that's that's alright. This is lovely. Okay. I guess that's fine. I'll equip that one over there. Alright. Um, yeah, what was I looking at? Okay, he's down to 100 gold. And still... Yeah, he's still got quite a lot of troops. Hmm. Challenge him to a fight? Probably not a good idea. Probably not a good idea. Could request an incursion against him from the Khazars, but I'll need more money for that. But his war against the Caliph is not going that well. Pretty much at a status quo. And he still needs to take out those peasants. Which he has so far failed to do. They're actually going to take out his little army over here. To the implacable Badaspan, I call on you to honor our alliance and join me in the Vesetian claim on the Sheikdom of Iskaf. Sure. Don't know who I'm at war with, but fine. Okay, just these guys. Well, they've got 1,800 troops. Surely you've got enough to take them out without me needing to help. I got an unpressed claim on the Villia of Damgen. Hmm. Where's Damgen? That's this one here. Nice. We can press that. Uh, similar amounts of troops. But he's got no allies. I've got four allies. Yeah, alright. Let's go to war with him for that. Greetings, Valley Badaspan of Dihistan. I have heard good things about you, and I am interested in starting a written conversation. I hope that this letter finds you willing, for I am awaiting your swift reply. Um, frame it in my hall for prestige. Politely decline. Who is he? The Gurid Amirate. Yeah, let's start exchanging letters with him. He might be a useful ally, actually. Can I marry him off to any of my children? How old are you? You're one. Won't accept. Okay, what if I change it to one of my older sons? Like, still won't accept. Okay, what about... Hmm. Even matrilineal you won't accept. Why not? Too many existing alliances. Yeah, okay. And also marrying down. If I was the Duke, it would be a bit easier, but because I'm still a Count. Okay, that's alright. Alright, let's raise our troops. Um, let's see how much they raise. Vandermid comes of age. I am proud to see my son no longer as a child, but as an adult. 
Always the curious and knowledge-hungry child, Vandermint has shown an affinity for scholarship from an early age. His understanding of philosophical and theoretical works is impressive, and he often engages in debate with his former teachers. Even at such a young age, he can be heard quoting obscure passages to support new ideas and theories. Very good. So he became a mastermind philosopher, calm, chaste, and paranoid. Not too pleased about the, the chaste aspect of it, but eh, that's okay. Um, let's find him a decent wife. We're not getting any good alliances out of that, so let's just find someone who's got good congenital traits, maybe. Uh, who's not too old as well. Satera, maybe? She's quick. Asenith is intelligent. She's a gluttonous, zealous, and lazy person. Um, Firuz. Mm. Avizar is fecund and quick. Hmm. I think we maybe. Oh, what, what was that? There was a. Sanyukta. Stubborn, deceitful, and gregarious. Yeah, maybe her. She's fine. Go for that. That'll do. Alright. And let's move you over there. Yeah, blunder results in claim. That was that was lucky. Prince Ishmael ibn al Mutawakkil of the Abbasid Empire joined the Wasitian claim on the cheat on the Sheetam of Iskaf. And they're both married now, very good. So he's in our court, right? Yeah. Excellent. She's a fornicator, okay, didn't see that. Um well, not much I can do about that now. Anyway. Thank you for your swift response. I'm looking forward to our correspondence. Please, I implore you, pick the first subject for us to discuss. Well, he probably wants to talk about uh, stewardship stuff. And I guess I'm not bad at stewardship either. So, yeah. Please, tell me about trade routes. Ramadan might join the Dehistan claim on the Vilia of Damgan as an enemy. Alright, well if that happens I'll need to call in some allies. We have another daughter, we'll call her Soraya. Yeah. We'll give her the entry focus I think. And... Yeah, let's get... let's just make sure that alliance is is good. And we'll have our spy master educate her and convert her. To think that you would ask about a subject so dear to me, you truly know me better than most. Since you have indulged me so, I must ask if there is anything I can do for you. Alright, so we can keep exchanging letters, and we might learn about diplomacy. Or we could arrange a trade deal, to increase holding taxes. Or try to gain a hook over him. Mm, let's just keep exchanging letters. Now we learned a lot about foreign affairs, and got a lot of um, lifestyle experience. That's good. That is good. Um, okay, let's gra grab Thoughtful then, and we'll head down towards Ducal Conquest, and... And we'll just siege this down, I think. Uh, hopefully before that guy gets there. No, they won't they won't both come. They're spread out too much. Okay, our wife is pregnant. Oh, we've increased county control in Dihistan. Very good. We can get him doing it in Gurgen then. So we're at a hundred there, hundred here. Yeah, only twenty-three there, that's unfortunate. It's alright. 
Um, oh, okay. We'll have to siege down the other one as well. That's fine, they're mucking about. Finally, the Terrid Grand Emirate gets the peasants under control. And we have another son there, we'll call him... Uh, Iskandar. And we'll give him... let's give him the Intrigue focus as well. And, yep, she can educate him too. My spy master has come to me with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting against my Aswar, Abdul Wahad. Okay. Alright, that wins that war. We'll enforce that now. Very good. Um, and, yeah, let's stand them down. So we've got Damgun under our control now as well. Very, very good. I think our truce has worn off with you, so we could conquer Mazandaran. Call in our allies. Or we could go after our liege now that he's in uh, a pretty dire state. What allies do we have? Now we've got good allies. Can we get any more? Let's just see, because I haven't married off all of these, um, all of our children just yet. Um, if I change you to court politics, yeah, yeah, yeah. over the mainland. That's only because I'm on court politics. Let's just see. Promise a grand wedding. We can get some larger alliances. Now, maybe it's worth just getting some of these little alliances. Mm. Don't want to promise a grand wedding. Um, just because we won't, we won't meet the promise at this stage, and we'll just lose a bunch of fame. Let's sort by age for him. I'll try to give him someone that's got uh, good congenital traits. Quick, maybe. Not really too many options, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess we'll go with quick. Alright, that's fine. Okay. Alright, we'll leave it there for the moment, I think. Um, actually, let's just wait. Oh, you need a guardian. You are on stewardship. Do it. Okay, I think uh, we'll wait for our liege to leave our territory and land over there. Perfect. All right, so he's going after. Ooh, no, he's coming back. He's sieging that down. All right, I think we'll leave it there for this episode. Next episode, we probably will, I think, declare war against. Muhammad Tahirs over here and try to take the Tahirid Grand Emirate. Um, yeah, so I'll see you then. Thanks for joining me. I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.